Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India morning to all of you welcome to the 10th lecture on economics management and entrepreneurship in the last few lectures we classified cost into two basic categories fixed cost and variable cost we used the concept of fixed and variable in making break even analysis and also in the last class we talked about relevant costs and then use those concepts to decide to take different types of managerial decisions we had also introduced activity based costing and we had talked about traditional costing in today's lecture we will elaborate on these aspects of how costs are accumulated and allocated to different organizational units or activities and then how they are finally applied to revenue generating products or and services so today's topic is cost allocation before we start discussing on cost allocation let me recall that a cost accounting system is basically a set of techniques to determine the cost of a product service customer or similar such cost objectives basically it collects and classifies costs and assigns them to different cost objects now if you recall we had also said that a cost when we assign or allocate a cost to any particular cost object we need to define a cost driver such a cost driver when used for allocating cost to a cost object is called a cost allocation base so basically in the in the discussion on cost allocation we shall interchangeably used the word cost driver the term cost driver or cost allocation base often one finds that the same cost driver causes different cost objects in such a situation we pool all those cost objects and call them cost pools because each of the cost objects in the cost pool in that cost pool is affected by a single cost driver or by a single cost allocation base so we can say that buildings utilities machines can be put together as a cost pool because they are affected by a single cost driver such as area of space occupied so this is a cost pool similarly different cost pools we can pull together there are different synonyms used for the word allocate we can say we can also use the word apply observe attribute reallocate trace assign distribute redistribute apportion reapportion etc so these are used interchangeably in our discussion now when we make allocation of cost there can be different 
there can be hierarchy of allocation. First, costs are allocated to organizational units such as a department or a section that is allocation type 1. In such a case, the cost objective or cost object is the organizational unit whose cost is to be estimated. Allocation type 2 is costs allocated from one organizational unit to another organizational unit. Whenever we think of a service department giving a service to another department, then there is a cost allocated from the service department to another department. So, the organizational units receiving the products or the services becomes the cost objective or cost object. And finally, all the costs are allocated to revenue generating products, services or even to customers and of course, activities. So, these cost objects for such allocation are activities, products, services and customers. So, we see that there are different types of allocation. Examples of allocation we are giving here for each type a computer service department serves both engineering and business schools. Each of these schools offers various undergraduate and postgraduate programs. So, the first type of allocation will be the various costs such as building, machines, energy etcetera they are all accumulated and are put to the organizational unit in this case the engineering the computer services department. So, that is the type 1 allocation. So, by knowing the component costs we first of all estimate the cost of the service department which is the computer service department. Type 2 allocation then is how the various cost components of computer service departments can be allocated to the engineering school and to the business school that is the type 2 allocation. Engineering school and business school then becomes become the cost objects and for the purpose of simplicity various costs of computer service departments are pulled as fixed cost pool and variable cost pool and each of them are then allocated to the two schools. Finally, the type 3 allocation is that once we know the cost allocated to the different schools then each school offers certain programs. We would like to know how much cost should be allocated to each of the programs offered by each of the two schools. So, in this case each program becomes a cost object and then the cost of the schools is allocated to each of the programs. So, this is a very simple example of each type of allocation starting from starting from service departments cost estimate allocating service department cost to two operating departments such as uh, engineering school and business school and then finally, applying these costs of each school to the final product which is a program offered by each department. Now, this allocation of service department cost naturally comes first and there are three guidelines. One establish the cost allocation scheme before the service is rendered rather than after. So, before the service is rendered one has to basically budget 
the procedure or the way or the scheme by which the cost each costful fixed and variable is to be allocated to the or to the uh, service department. Then allocate fixed cost and variable cost pools separately and evaluate the performance of the department using budgets. So, these are the three general guidelines for allocating service department costs. Now, let us apply them and see how it is to be used in practice. Normally, for fixed cost we decide in advance a percentage budgeted for each unit, percentage fixed on the basis of past uses rather than the current use. It means that suppose in the past 5 years the service department's fixed cost or service department has has been used by the operating departments what is the past average usage of the service department for these different schools. So, that percentage is fixed in advance and the variable cost is also on the basis of a budgeted unit rate multiplication actual uses by the unit. We will actually make use of these two rules or methods to actually find how fixed cost and variable cost are allocated. Now, let us take this example which will clarify all that we have said just now. The computer services department of a university offers services to engineering and business school and the computer services department has the following cost components. As I was telling all the costs that are considered fixed are pulled together fixed cost is 100,000 rupees and variable cost comes to 200 rupees per hour. Now, the monthly average use and the actual use by computer time by the two schools are as follows. Now, this monthly average is based on the past data will be the budgeted percentage budgeted for each unit. So, for fixed cost allocation we need this information percent budgeted for each unit based on past uses. So, past usage data gives us this that monthly average of engineering school using the services of the computer department is 490 hours and the business school makes use of the computer 210 hours of the time. Therefore, this ratio is 490 divided by the sum of the two that is the engineering school and the business school percentage is 210 divided by 490 plus 210, but the actual use in a particular month is engineering school uses 400 hours and business school uses 200 hours. Now, this will be used for calculating how the variable cost is to be allocated to the engineering school and to the business school. The question is given this information find the costs allocated to the two schools. Now, we are given the fixed cost as 100,000 rupees and the unit variable cost is 200 rupees per hour. The actual uses is engineering 400 hours and business 200 hours. Now, for fixed cost allocation the percent percentage use usage by the two schools is as I was telling 490 hours divided by total which is uh, comes to 70 percent and for business 
it comes to 210 divided by this equal to 30 percent, which means 70 percent of the total fixed cost of the computer services department should be allocated to engineering and 30 percent of the fixed cost of the computer services department should be allocated to the business school. And since the fixed cost is 100,000, 70 percent of that is 70,000. So, in the table in which we are calculating how the cost is to be allocated under engineering fixed cost allocation is 70,000 and fixed cost allocation to business is 30 percent of 100,000 that comes to 30,000 rupees. Now, when we come to variable cost allocation, it is the budgeted unit rate product and multiplication actual uses. Actual uses are given 400 hours and 200 hours. So, 400 hours multiplication the rate, the rate is 200 rupees per hour. So, 200 into 400 makes it 80,000 rupees variable cost allocation for engineering school and 200 into 200 that comes to 40,000 rupees for business school. So, totaling we find for engineering school it is 150,000 rupees and for business school it is 70,000 rupees. So, this is an example of how, how the allocation of service department cost to the other operating departments is bad. Now, suppose that we have certain central costs, central costs say for example, advertising. This is done not for one particular product, but for all products of a company and therefore, it is considered as a central cost. Now, such central costs are considered unallocated and as I was telling you this usually is subtracted from the gross profit to find the net profit. Now, sometimes however, we do try to allocate the central costs and that should be not on the basis of actual uses but on the basis of a budgeted use. For example, suppose that the advertising cost in a year is 100,000 rupees. So, one can make cost allocation to different territories. Let us say that there are two territories for product distribution, two territories territory 1 and territory 2 and the company hopes that territory 1 would be the total sales of territory 1 compared to territory 2 will be in the ratio 60 is to 40. So, 60 percent of this advertisement cost which is the central cost can be allocated to territory 1 and the 40 percent of this can be alloc alloc allocated to territory 2. Now, this is a very simplistic manner of saying ordinarily this remains unallocated and is subtracted when the profit and loss statement is prepared. However, if somebody wants to actually allocate it to different uh, beneficiaries such as territory 1 and territory 2, this is the procedure. Now, we come to a very interesting case of service departments offering services to one another. Let us say in a in the case of a university, we have computer services department, we have a central library, we have accounting department, we have establishment section, all these are service departments and they give service to one another as also to the operating departments. 
Now, in such cases, we say that reciprocal services are offered by the service departments. Now, how to therefore, allocate cost of these service departments? This is the question. Now, usually there are two methods to allocate cost of service departments to final operating departments and then finally, to the revenue generating products and services. The two methods are one a direct method to a step down method. In the direct method, the services offered to other service departments are completely ignored. That means, only the services that are offered to the operating department are only considered in the direct method. Whereas, in step down method, the services offered to the sister service departments are also considered before finally, allocating the costs to the operating departments. Now, let us take an example to illustrate this case. Let us say that we are considering a manufacturing company with two producing departments and two service departments. The producing departments are molding and finishing. The two service departments are facilities department which, consider, which considers rental, cost of heat, cost of light etcetera and personnel department. Now, naturally the service departments let us say personnel department not only gives service to molding and finishing departments that are which are basically operating or producing departments, it also gives service to facilities department. Just as facilities department which is another service department, it gives service to not only the producing departments like molding and finishing, but also to personnel department. This is the reciprocal service that we are talking about. Now, here the company has decided that cost driver for allocating facilities departments cost, facilities departments cost will be area occupied. That means, the area that is occupied by the personal department, by the finishing department, by the molding department will be the cost driver to determine how the facilities department's cost will be allocated to each of these three departments. Whereas, the cost driver for allocating personal department cost is the number of employees. Personal department offers services to all the three and each of these three departments have some has some people associated with uh, them and the number of employees working in each one of these will determine how the personnel management's department cost will be allocated to each one of these three. Now, let us use the two methods. First, let us use the direct method. Okay, before we do that, we have the data. This table gives that these are the two service departments, facilities and personnel and these are the two producing departments, molding and finishing. Now, each department has got certain direct department costs 126,000 rupees, they are all in rupees, 24,000 for personnel, molding is 100,000 and finishing is 160,000 rupees direct. And they occupy 3000 meter square facilities department, 9000 personal department, 15000 molding department and 3000 finishing department. So, many meter square of space each one of these four departments occupy. Number of employees in each one of these four is 20, 30, 80 and 320 respectively. 
and later we shall also use these two aspects, these two data, these two rows of data for applying the cost to the final product that is to be manufactured. So, for the time being we probably will not be needing these two rows of data, but we will come back to it once we need them. Now, let us talk about the direct method. In the direct method, the idea is that the service department, the mutual service offered or the reciprocal service offered is totally ignored. So, it means that suppose we start with personal department, then personal department's cost is allocated directly to molding and finishing depending on the number of people the molding department and the finishing department uh, is having. So, molding department's personal requirement is 80 and this is 320. So, this is 400 people. So, 9000 will be apportioned in that manner that is 80 divided by 400 uh, not, I am sorry not 9000, but 24000. So, 24000 multiplication 80 by 400 will be assigned to molding and 24000 multiplication 320 by 400 will be assigned to finishing. So, directly the personal department's cost is being assigned to molding and finishing on this basis. In a similar way the facilities department's cost, the cost driver to be used is square meter. So, facilities department cost we look at these two values. So, this is 15000 and this is 3000. So, 15000 plus 3000 makes it 18000. The ratio of 15000 to 18000 multiplication 126000 is the cost to be allocated to molding. Similarly, the cost of the facilities department allocated to finishing is 3000 3, divided by 18000 multiplication 126000. Now, these calculations are given here. Facilities department cost allocated to molding department. Molding department has got an area of 15000 total area is 18000, total cost of the facilities department to be allocated is 126000. Therefore, this comes to 126000. Uh, I, I think there is a, a mistake here. Let me make the correction. This has to be 15,000 division and this has to go from here. Yes, there was a mistake, now it is all right. It says 126,000 multiplication 15 divided by 18,000 is the amount here and for the finishing department it is 126000 multiplication 3000 divided by 18000 and that comes to 21000 together it is 126000 so similarly there is a mistake here as well let me make the correction here Yes, it is all right. Now, the personal department cost is 24000 and this has to be allocated to molding and finishing department and the pertinent cost driver is the number of persons, number of employees working in molding and finishing. In molding department there are 80 employees, in finishing there are 320, therefore 400 number of employees personal department is serving, but only 80 are in molding. Therefore, this ratio is 80 divided by 400 that multiplied by the personal department's direct cost 
which is 24,000 and that gives a value of 4,800 rupees for molding department and for the finishing department likewise this is 24,000 multiplication 320 divided by 400 that makes it 19,000 19,200 there is a comma here Nineteen thousand two hundred rupees, totaling twenty-four thousand. Now we see, therefore, that the total cost of molding is this one zero five zero zero zero. That's the cost allocated from the facilities department. Four eight zero zero cost allocated to the molding department from the personal department, and its own direct cost. Look at this uh, table. The direct department cost of molding is 100,000. So, 100,000 rupees that it already has plus the costs allocated from facilities and personnel when they are added, it gives you 100,000 plus 105 plus 4,800 that makes it 209,800 rupees the total cost of molding. Similarly, the total cost of finishing is 21,000 here. 19,200 here and the direct cost of finishing department which is given here. The direct cost of finishing department is 160,000. So, 160,000 rupees here. So, when you add these three it comes to 200,000 200, 200, uh, 200 rupees. Now, this is the way in which the direct method works. So, as you can see in the direct method, we do not consider the reciprocal services offered. That means, we do not consider in this particular case that a facilities department gives service to personal department or personal department gives service to facilities department. We only consider the services offered by each of these two service departments to the final operating or producing departments in this case they are molding and finishing. Now, let us apply let us let us look at the step down method. Step down method as I have already told you considers the service offered by a service department to another service department. So, there are two steps first step is select the service department that gives the greatest service measured by cost and allocates its cost to all other departments including other existing service departments. So, select the service department that gives the greatest service measured by cost. For that we look at this table. There are two service departments measured by cost which gives the highest service the cost direct department cost for facilities is larger than this. So, 126,000 rupees is larger than 24,000. So, we are selecting the facilities department cost first and then allocating this cost to not just the producing departments, but to all the three departments. So, facilities department is selected the cost driver for facilities department is area. Now, the cost of this department is already known as 126,000 rupees and that is allocated to all the three not necessarily only to molding and finishing on the basis of the area. Now, area for these three departments are 9, 15 and 3. So, the personal department what is the proportion of this area? It is 9 divided by 9 plus 15 plus 3. This multiplied by 126,000 is therefore, the cost of facilities department allocated to personnel that is 42,000 rupees. Similarly, we go for molding department. It is 126,000 multiplication 15 divided by 9 plus 15 plus 3. and that is 70,000 rupees. 
for the finishing department it is 3 divided by 9 plus 15 plus 3 multiplication 126,000 and that is 14,000 rupees. Now, after this step 1 is applied what now becomes the cost of various departments? Its own direct development co direct cost plus the allocated cost. For example, in the personal department the allocated cost was 42,000 and its direct cost direct department cost is 24,000. So, 24,000 plus the cost allocated from the facilities department 24,000 plus 42,000. So, that becomes 66,000 therefore, is the cost of personal department molding department becomes the direct cost which was 100,000 plus the allocated cost 70,000 that makes it 170,000 finishing department is 160,000 direct cost plus 14,000 that makes it 174,000 rupees. So, we have by allocating the facilities department cost we now have one less number of service departments. We have only personal department as the only service department and now step 2 says continue to use step 1 for the remaining service departments till costs of all service departments are allocated. So, now we have only personal department left and the cost driver per personal department as we already know is number of employees. Cost of this department is known as 66,000 and we allocate the 66,000 is actually the total cost, the direct cost of personal department plus the cost allocated from the facilities department together gives the cost and this cost has to be now allocated to molding and finishing. The molding cost, the cost allocated uh, uh, from the personal department to molding is therefore, 80 employees in molding divided by 80 plus 320 which is 400 this is the therefore, is the cost allocated from the personal department to the molding department. Cost allocated from the personnel to finishing is 320 divided by this this is the number of employees ratio multiplication 66 that makes it 50,000 52,800. Therefore, after step 2 the total cost of various departments becomes this 13,200 plus the previous amount was for molding 170,000. The original direct cost was only 100, but after allocation of cost from the facilities department the amount was 170,000 rupees. This 170,000 rupees is now added to the 13,200 rupees making it 183,200 rupees. So, this is therefore, the total cost associated with molding department and the total cost associated with finishing department is previously it was 174 here and now we are adding 52,800 rupees after cost of the personal department is allocated to finishing. And when we add this it becomes 226,800 rupees the total is same total is 410,000 rupees which which is same as if we add this for it will come to 410,000 rupees. So, we have now been able to allocate the service department's cost to the operating department. So, these two methods are applied and usually the step down method is preferred because here it recognizes that each service department offers some service to other service departments as well in addition to offering services to the revenue generating departments. 
Now, there are some costs that are not related to cost drivers. How to take care of these? That means, we are unable to find specific cost drivers for such costs. Now, there are three approaches. One, divide the costs into two cost pools. One cost pool to use the cost driver and the second cost pool to use another cost driver or use activity based costing. This is one approach. The second approach is divide the costs into two cost pools, one cost pool to use the cost driver. The second cost pool is considered as a period cost remains unallocated and subtracted at the end from the gross profit. And the third approach is even though we know that a single cost driver is not adequate, we still continue to use a single cost driver. Now, we come to the final allocation type 3 which is applying the costs to final cost objects such as the products or services. Now, here there are once again two approaches the traditional approach and the activity based costing approach A B C activity based costing approach. We already know each of these two approaches, but we are illustrating these approaches once again, so that you get a full understanding of these approaches. The traditional approach is allocate to service department allocate sorry this this there is a mistake here allocate service departments cost to operating departments and to find the total cost of each operating department to be applied to products and services and finally apply the total cost of each operating department to products and services now let's take the same example to illustrate our point. You remember I had given in this table there were two other rows of data. The this row is direct labor hour molding uses 2100 person hours or direct labor hours, finishing department uses 10000 direct labor hours, molding department uses 30000 machine hours and finishing uses 5400 machine hours. We are we need this data because we would like to allocate the molding and finishing departments cost to a product. A product might be using so many direct labor hour of molding and so many direct labor hour of finishing and similarly so many machine hours of molding and so many machine hours of finishing. The, with the knowledge of these data it will now be possible to find out the cost of manufacturing a particular unit of product. <coughs> these are the values. Now, from our earlier calculation we have seen the total cost to be allocated to products molding has got 183,000 rupees and finishing has got 226,000 rupees. These two data we have got from our earlier uh, step down approach using the step down, step down approach of cost allocation and the machine hour for molding is 30,000, the finishing direct labor hour is 5,400. So, the unit cost of allocation for molding is 183,000 divided by 30,000, thus comes to 6.11 rupees per machine hour. Whereas, for finishing 
the cost driver is direct labor hour. For molding it is mo mostly machine intensive, finishing is labor intensive. Therefore, the cost drivers chosen are different. For molding department it is machine hour and for finishing department it is direct labor hour. Now, if so many machine hours are used and the total cost to be allocated is this, then the unit cost of machine hour is 6.11, which is this divided by this. And for finishing department, the unit cost of direct labor hour is this divided by this, that comes to 22 rupees 68 paise. And suppose that a product takes 10 machine hours in molding department and 5 direct labor hours in finishing department, then what we need to do is to multiply 6.11 with 10 and multiply 22.68 with 5 and add them up. That is what we have done to find the cost of a product. 6.11 multiply the multiplication 10 plus 22.68 multiplication 5 that gives 61.10 plus 113.40 which is equal to 174.50. That means, the manufacturing cost of a unit product in this particular case that takes 10 machine hours in molding and 5 direct labor hour in finishing is 174.50 rupees. So, this is the traditional method of applying cost to the final product. By the way, we use the word application or apply basically it is the word application or apply is same as allocation, but when allocation is done to the final product it is called application that is the only difference otherwise the meaning is still the same we still use the cost driver concept and find out the allocation to be made. Now, we illustrate the activity based costing approach. This is a different example and you are already acquainted with these symbols. In the activity based costing approach, instead of applying, uh, instead of allocating the costs to different organizational units, allocation is made to activities. In this case, the activities are material handling, assembly, soldering, and testing. And the way the costs have been allocated to these activities we have not shown here. We are just showing that this activity the total cost is 182,000 rupees, assembly it is 857,600, soldering 808,400 and testing 592,000 rupees. So, these are activities. Now, we are considering only the variable cost pool. Let us say that the that uh, uh, there is a small mistake here, let me make the correction. This has to be model 2 and 3. Yes. Now, these are the variable cost pools. This is direct material for model 1, direct material for model 2, direct material for model 3. And these are the final cost objects that is the 3 products, model 1 product, model 2 and model 3 and the number is same 80 boards, 80 boards and 80 boards and these are basically connectors instead of showing so many lines 
we have just said that this line is coming to here to here and to here and this line is coming to the model 1 that is this activity is done for model 1, 2 and 3. Similarly, this activity is also done for model 1, 2 and 3 and this activity is also done for model 1, 2 and 3. And as you recall, as you can remember these are these 1, 20, 40, 60, 5 etcetera they are all resource consuming rate that is one board of model 1 requires 20 distinct parts to be handled by material handling, 40 insertions to be made in assembly, 60 parts to be soldered and 5 parts to be tested and 1 that is there is a one to one relationship that means one model requires rupees 4000 per board that is the meaning of one. So, similar interpretations are made here and here and here. So, to find out the cost these costs to be allocated to these products it is very simple you have to find out let us say material M material handling material handling cost which is 182,000 is to be allocated to these. So, what we need to do is to basically find how many parts 80 into 20. So, 60 parts are coming for model 1 and here for model 15 parts 80, uh, 80 into 20 is 1600, 18 to 15 is 1200, 18 to 10 is 800. These many parts are used for material handling. So, the ratio in the same proportion that is 18 to 20 divided by 18 to 20 plus 18 to 15 plus 18 to 10 is the ratio with uh, which this will be allocated to model 1 and similarly allocation will be made for assembly, for soldering and for testing and then the, the cost the direct material cost of model 1 multiplication 80 is to be added. Then the cost of making model 1 board is fully calculated. So, friends in today's lecture we elaborately talked about the way in which costs are allocated. Now, I summarize first of all different types of costs are pulled together as fixed or variable and they are allocated to different organizational units. Then service departments costs are allocated to operating departments cost following two methods direct method or step down method and finally, the operating departments cost are allocated or applied to the products or services the final cost objects. Activity based costing gives much more detail because it considers different activities that are performed and makes a thorough analysis of how the resources flow and therefore, how the costs are allocated. So, naturally the manufacturing cost for products estimated from an activity based costing point of view is much more precise.